Hi everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. The next page in our taco manual is going to take us to a beloved regional specialty. Now it's called gar carne de cebrada or just sort of unadorned shredded beef and it really comes to its own in the northern part of Mexico though carne de cebrada is really beloved through the entire country. I'm going to show you how to make a lot of this because I'll tell you when you're going to have a taco party this is something I turn to all the time because it's such a crowd pleaser. Now a lot of people would use they would boil it on the top of the stove and do everything on top of the stove. I think it's way easier to do and especially if you're going to have a party to utilize the slow cooker to do this with. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to go through the full thing. There are recipes out there that are way simpler than this one but I can tell you they're not going to be as good as this one. It's going to be flavored it's beef and we're going to start with a chuck roast. Um, it's going to be beef that is flavored with tomatoes and green chilies and herbs and browned onions. So you get the idea. It's a real crowd pleaser. First thing that we're going to do is to roast some poblanos. Now this is not the only chili that you could use for this and I like it to be really full of green chili flavor. So I'm going to take uh, three of these large poblanos here and I'm going to ro the, roast them under the broiler. Roasting them on the stovetop on the gas flame is totally fine. It just takes a little bit longer in this case. So I'm going to slide them in here and I'm going to keep my eye on them and as they start to blacken and blister I will rotate them and then rotate them and rotate them until they are completely blackened and blistered all over. That'll take me 10 or 12 minutes or so to do that and I'll meet you back here when those are all roasted. Okay we've got those roasted poblanos already. Now that's not the only chili that you could use. Um, some people just like to chop up jalapenos or serranos. You wouldn't roast those and you could just add those with the tomato part of this recipe or one of the things I like to do is use what's called chile guero which is like a hot Hungarian wax or banana pepper. What's called shkatik down in the Yucatan Peninsula. You could roast those and then you could use those in this. I would only use about half as much by weight as what you would use of the poblanos. This was about a pound and a half or about a pound excuse me and that would be about a half a pound. Okay now on to the meat. I am using a two pound chuck roast here because I think that chuck roast gives you the juiciest meat and the best texture. There are a lot of other things you could use for this. You could just buy stew meat in the grocery store but it oftentimes will come out just a little drier than buying a chuck roast. I'm going to cut this into one inch cubes. Okay a couple things about the next step. I'm going to brown this meat. You will find lots of recipes where people will just simmer it um, or just put it right into a slow cooker. I think there's so much more flavor when you brown the meat. So I'm first going to season this meat with salt and then uh, my cooking medium of choice today is going to be uh, bacon fat. It's just fat that I have collected from cooking bacon. Um, you could use oil, you could use rendered pork lard for this but I'm going to put enough into this base to my slow cooker. Now this is a stove top safe base to a slow cooker here. If yours is not stove top safe you're going to want to do this in a large a very large skillet. This is just the right size for me to put this amount of meat in there and have it be um, sort of in a single layer not too crowded. Too crowded will mean that it won't brown it'll just kind of start to sweat and, um, and boil. I've got a couple pieces there that need to pull apart. Okay so now you want to hear that good sizzle when you put it in. That means that you've got the temperature right. Because this is stovetop ceramic that I'm working with here 
Um, I put it on and let it heat for about six or seven minutes. That's what I'm looking for here. Okay, I'm stopping. I'm not even going to get it all in there. I thought that I would be able to get it all in, but I want to be able to keep it in that single layer so that I can turn it and brown it all. As soon as it's browned, I'm going to put it over here on this rimmed baking sheet. We've got all of the meat browned nicely now. Now, you'll notice that I didn't cut any of the fat out of this chuck roast, and I encourage you to do exactly the same because um, that will all render, and fat is flavor. And when it renders into this whole preparation, it'll just make it taste that much better. You can spoon off the fat at the very end. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but I don't take it off early on in the preparation. Now, while that meat was doing its thing in there, <laughs> I sliced up a couple of big onions, and I'm going to put those into the pan now. Again, if you don't have a stovetop safe insert to your slow cooker, you'll want to do this in that same skillet that you browned the meat in. And we're going to stir this around occasionally until we get these beautifully caramelized. Just look how beautiful those onions are. Those will add a lot of sweetness and depth to this. Now we've got our meat to go back in here. Make sure you get all of the juices from that. Spread that into an even layer. And then we've got our flavorings to go in here. Of course, those roasted and peeled poblanos are going to be the next layer in all of this. I'll tell you, this is absolutely a glorious smell in the house when you get the meat browned, the onions browned, the roasted chilies, and we're just going to keep that going here. Okay, so I have a 28 ounce uh, can of fire roasted tomatoes drained, and I'm going to put those over the top, sort of sprinkling them over the top here. And then we are going to put herbs. You might be using some dried herbs. In Mexico, they sell these little bundles of thyme and marjoram um, and uh, bay leaves. So I grow those in my garden because I always want to have that around. So we've got that going on the top there. Then a little bit of Worcestershire. This is my little secret weapon. It will just take, make it taste that much richer in that umami or beefy kind of flavor. And lastly, we're going to put in here two teaspoons of salt. Now, this is a measured amount, so actually measure it. Don't just sprinkle some in here because that I know is what the minimum is that's going to be needed for this. So two teaspoons, and then we're going to go right over now to the slow cooker. So I'll grab this guy, turn it off underneath there, and let's go over here to the slow cooker. Slide that right in there. Turn the guy on here. So I want to go to high, and then I want to put it on six hours. So this is a great thing to do when early in the morning, if you're going to have a party in the evening, cover it up and just let that fill your house with the most glorious aroma ever. Okay, after six hours, this is what it's going to look like. I just pulled this one off of the slow cooker base here. So let's see about what that looks like there. Okay, you can see the thyme branches here and marjoram branches. And then we've got the bay leaves. I'm just going to throw that right over there. I'm going to put this now onto a fairly high fire so that it can come to, so it can come to, it's not wanting to catch there at all, is it? <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get there. We got it. Okay. So we're going to let that come to a boil now, but while that's coming to a boil, um, I'm going to work on potatoes 
And I like to add these at the end, not during the whole cooking process, because at the end, they will have their shape. If I put them in at the beginning, they'll all be falling apart. So I'm gonna cut this into small cubes. Remember, we are making here a taco filling, so big pieces of potato will not be welcome. I like to square off the potatoes and then cut them into about quarter inch cubes. Okay, I'm gonna blanch these, but I'm gonna do it the way that is easiest for me at home, which is not to bring a pot of salted water to a boil, but instead to do it in the microwave. So in a microwave safe bowl, I will collect all of these potatoes now. And I'm going to put a little bit of water with them, just a little splash. We'll cover that with plastic wrap like that. Uh, we don't want that to balloon, balloon up too much, so I usually do a couple of pokes with the end of a knife. And we are going to put this in here at four minutes, full power. And we're going to let those par cook, if you will, in that. Okay, next step is this has come to a boil now. I'm going to turn it way down so that the bubbling kind of goes away. And I'm going to spoon off fat. There's not too much fat in this one here, but you want to spoon off a little bit of the fat anyway. Um, you can make a decision on that on your own. But you'll notice that even though we didn't add any liquid to this and we drained the tomatoes, that it's very juicy. So our final step in all of this, I think it looks like it's in pretty good shape now. So our final step here is to shred the meat. Now you can do it in many different ways, <laughs> but I'm going to go back to my old fashioned potato masher because if you work it through here, you will notice that it's just kind of the right piece of equipment. This is also obviously very good for making guacamole. It's where you see me use it the most. Got one piece, one little piece of that time that I didn't get earlier. And that's all it takes to break up that meat. You could do it with the back of a large spoon too. Um, it just won't be quite as efficient as that. Okay, I'm gonna let the, turn the heat up now underneath this and I'm just gonna let it simmer until it's reduced enough that it's gonna kind of hold together. Just think about what you would like to have in your taco. You don't want it to be so juicy that it runs out and runs all over your shirt and all that sort of thing. So we're gonna reduce this until most of the juice has gone away. When the potatoes are ready, I'll just mix them right in here so they start to soak up some of the delicious juices that we have here. You just got to come over here and see this beauty. This to me is the best carne de cebrada because we've concentrated all of those meat juices in this. And you can see how much of the juice now has been evaporated and concentrated into the mixture there. So let's make a taco. I've got some warm tortillas here, um, but a couple of them on the plate. They're really warm tortillas and it's still juicy so it's best for me to pick up this plate and just pile that on. Now what I like to do is to put a little queso añejo on it. I know that's sort of gilding the lily but I love the umami quality, that deliciousness of the añejo like cheese. You could use a little parmesan or some 
um, some any other kind of like garnishing cheese. Now you could do any kind of salsa with this that you want or no salsa at all. I happen to like a little bit of the Mexican hot sauce. I'm using Tamasula here. Just put a little bit of that and that'll kind of underscore all of those flavors. And there you have, I will say, one of the most satisfying, the most crowd-pleasing dishes that you could ever make.